So now that we've talked about the different origins of data, I'm going to introduce you to a new video that will be about the, some reminders about data quality. So the plan will be as follows. So first, we'll do a little uh, con contextualization uh, about the processes of data quality. Then we'll go into detail uh, about the data workflow, then about data quality and digitization, and what, what we can do to ensure that uh, our digitized data are uh, uh, good enough. Uh, and then we'll go uh, in, into each um, category of data quality, uh, that is to say, the metadata, the taxonomic information, spatial information, the collection information, and the descriptive information. So I'll begin with the, some background. So um, in order to understand uh, data and data quality, uh, we, we can think of it uh, as an ocean of data at first. So there's really a lot of data uh, right now. Um, this last few years, uh, data and biodiversity data uh, have increased uh, really a lot. So now we have hundreds of millions of data that are available. So it's really a, a great uh, amount of data. And from this ocean of data, we can... Uh, access to rivers of information, so we can extract information from the oceans of data. Then these rivers of information can become streams of knowledge uh, if we uh, inter interpret them uh, correctly. And these streams of knowledge can, uh, in the end, uh, uh, give some droplets of understanding. So we need to have a lot of data at, at first, so some oceans, in order to have only a few droplets of understanding, but it's uh, really great to have these droplets. So now I will talk about fitness for use. Uh, so first of all, what is fitness for use? So here we have a, a little definition of this term. So we have to know that the data quality is a relative concept that depends uh, on the use of the data. So as Chrisman was saying in uh, 1991, the general intent of descri describing the quality of a particular data set or record is to describe the fitness of that data set or record for a particular use that one may have in mind for the data. So your data is not inherently good or bad. <clears throat> it only depends on what the person that will, will use it uh, will do with them. So if the person we use this uh, in good conditions, uh, your data would be perfect. Uh, but sometimes uh, some people might want to reuse your data for really particular uh, research or works. And uh, if they don't have enough information about your data or if they didn't understand your data correctly, they might uh, have or get the wrong result. So it really depends on the, the use that will be uh, uh, the, the use that will be done with your data. So first of all, we're going to describe the data workflow. Uh, and we will see that uh, at each step of the, of the workflow, the people have some responsibility about the data quality. So about data processing and quality, uh, each institution should have uh, at first a vision targeted on data quality. So it's really not necessary to reinvent the wheel and uh, we really have to use already existing standards. Uh, now we have a lot of standards that we can use, especially in biodiversity. So if you want to create your own standard, there are really high chances that the standard you want to create already exists. So please have a look at what already uh, is available and you will have a lot of choice and a lot of standards and terms to, to use. Then you can seek efficiency. Uh, that is to say, uh, in collecting data and in doing uh, quality checks, uh, you, you should really be efficient and avoid duplicating efforts. So uh, try to communicate and uh, have a, a really uh, efficient workflow with people that are not doing the, the same things uh, at different steps. Then you have to promote sharing of your data. So you can promote 
yeah, the sharing of your data, of your information, of the tools, of the standards that you used. Um, then you can think at a larger uh, scale. So uh, if you if you work in a in a, in a team of research, researcher, you will have to think that maybe other teams or of scientists scientists will uh, want to use your data or uh, similar data. Then you can think about the people that that will use your data at uh, the international level, for example. So uh, from uh, to give you an example, uh, if you if all of your documentation is in French, it's it can be really useful for you if you uh, only speak and work in French. But uh, you have to think that maybe some people who don't understand French will want to use your data. So it might be a good idea to begin to translate translate your data and or your metadata and uh, documentation in English or in another language that could be useful for the users. Uh, then you have to cater, as I was saying, to the users and their needs. Uh, so for the languages, for the con contextualization also. So if, if you have some uh, very specific protocol that you use for uh, collecting your data on the field, you may want to share it because it can be useful for people that don't know how you collect, uh, collected your data. So uh, when they reuse your data, they will know uh, what kind of protocol you used and it will make sense for their, uh, their work and their research. And you can also invest some time and maybe money in documentation and in creating metadata. So as I was saying, if you, if you have uh, additional information about the collect of your data, the, um, the protocols used, the people involved, you, you really have to 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 compile them these informations uh, in uh, in metadata and in documentation so once that this uh, vision on about data quality is uh, is ready you you have to uh, put in place a policy implementing this vision then an implementation strategy for this policy for, so first of all, you have some pre precise goals at short, mean, and long term. Uh, here we can see uh, a graph about the data processing and quality uh, process. So you can see that during the, the whole uh, process, there are a lot of people involved. So <coughs> in, the, in this, uh, in this uh, graph, we, can, we will start at the beginning with the collection of the data. That is to say the, the field work. So here we have the collector. That is the person who is on the field and who observes or collects uh, the data. Then uh, once the data is observed uh, uh, and or collected, but uh, transcribed in a, in a uh, field book, <coughs> it will be added to, to, uh, to documentation then into a database, then some people will work with the database and uh, maybe do some documentation about the database. And then it will be, uh, it can be shared on, a, on an intern network. And then in, at the end, it, it, it's, it's best it's the, if the data is shared uh, on the internet in uh, networks such as uh, GBIF. So uh, at each step, we, we have a, a risk of doing some errors. So for example, uh, we can have errors of transcription here uh, during the, the data informat informatization part. Then we can have some errors uh, when managing the database. We can also have some errors uh, in the documentation process or uh, when people uh, have uh, remarks about the database. Uh, then we can also um, make some errors or at least uh, share these errors during the publication process. So either in the intern uh, um, network or in the, the internet. But luckily we, we, can, uh, we, we can notice and uh, correct these errors at every step. <coughs> so as I was saying, Quality loss happens at every step. 
And the responsibility in terms of data quality has to be assigned at the earlier possible step of the process. So the collector is responsible for the data that he collected. And then uh, at each step, you you have to have at least one person that can uh, be assigned a responsibility for the data quality and that will communicate with the, with the person in the step below and in the step um, above uh, in order to uh, to make sure that the errors are well uh, documented and uh, noticed and corrected. So uh, when speaking about sharing responsibilities, we can see that we have three main um, uh, persons or groups of persons that are uh, that can share the responsibilities about the data. So first of all, we have the or uh, the collector or the collectors uh, who have to ensure that the labels and logs are as correct, complete, and readable as possible. Then uh, he uh, he or she also have to uh, make sure that the collection methods are vastly documented. So even if you think that it's not really interesting to share uh, every bit of information you have about the protocol you use to collect some butterflies or some ferns or other biodiversity data. I will really encourage you to, to note uh, everything you can think about, uh, about the context of the observation, about the context of the collection. And maybe one day this information will be useful to someone. You don't know who or when your data will be reused. So it's better to, to, to share uh, too much information than not enough. And as a collector, you also have to make sure that your remarks are clear. So uh, your, your write, writing should be at least readable uh, for uh, former use. And uh, your remarks are, are to be clear and non-ambiguous. And uh, then we have the second category of person that can have a share of the responsibility for the data, which is the curator or curators. Uh, that have to ensure that the rest uh, uh, to be sure of the quality of the retranscription of the data collected in the, in the field into the database. The creator of the data also have to um, uh, do some uh, regular validation tests and to regularly save and archive the data, uh, but uh, with uh, keeping the previous versions, of course. Um, then the creator also have to ensure the respect, respect of private life, of intellectual rights and local traditions and sensibilities, and to provide uh, quality documentation, uh, including known issues about the data. So, for example, if you noticed uh, some geographical issues in your data, but you don't have the time or the money or the possibility to uh, to correct them right now, you can always uh, add some uh, information in the documentation saying that, yes, we noticed that we have this kind of error in the georeferencing. We will, we are working on it. We will correct them later. But for now, just be aware that uh, we have this technical problem. And you can do that for every other type of problem that you might uh, encounter with the, within the creation process of the data. Then, of course, uh, as a curator, you have to take feedback into account. So that's why it's really es essential to communicate. So be it with your colleague, colleagues or with some uh, unknown users that might have some remarks to do about your data. So um, you, when someone uh, makes some remarks about your data, it's, uh, it's really best to take these remarks into account to, to ensure that the, the remarks are, are true, and to correct the data uh, in, uh, consequently. Uh, then responsibility for the maintenance uh, is also the, the creator work. Um, and he also has the moral responsibility to improve data quality uh, if and when possible for future use and users. And last but not least, um, the third level of uh, sharing responsibilities is the user. So you're the user of data 
has the moral responsibility to inform data curators about mistakes and uh, omissions in the data and documentation. Otherwise, uh, the curator might not be aware that uh, the data contains some errors or the documentation contains some errors. Um, so that's why the users uh, also have to provide feedback to, def to define future pr probabilities. So, for example, if you share data without uh, georeferencing, uh, maybe some users will complain that uh, they don't have the coordinates for your data and uh, they won't be able to use your data for uh, niche modeling or uh, any other kind of research that uh, involves uh, georeferencing. So maybe these users will get back to you and say, look, your data are really great. They are, the, the, the identification is really amazing. And I know you, you did a lot of work with the creation of your data. So maybe in the future, you can uh, improve the Joe referencing and uh, it will be useful for everybody. And uh, the user also um, has to determine whether the data are adequate for uh, what he intends to do with them. Uh, and he also can decide not to use them if, it, if the data, if it doesn't think the data are adequate. So this is the user's responsibility to analyze the data he, he will uh, download and uh, to see if the data are really adequate for his work. So if you use data that is not adequate and then you have some mistakes in your results, it's not the fault of the data uh, publisher, it's the responsibility of the user because you because you, it's your responsibility because you didn't check that the data were, were indeed adequate for your work. <clears throat> so you really have to be uh, careful about that. So you can uh, have access and download a really uh, gigantic um, amount of data now, uh, especially in JBIF with the biodiversity data, but you also have to make sure that your data are adequate for what you intend to do with them. Then uh, what technically, what can the digitization team do? Uh, in order to ensure data quality. So first of all, we, uh, as a dig digitization team, we can help to document the data set uh, through metadata and record level annotations. So as I was saying before, it's always better to have a lot of information uh, than not enough. So uh, every uh, everywhere you can add information about the protocols used, about the dates, about the places, about the people involved, uh, please add this information, even if you think it's not necessary or it's not useful, it might be useful to someone someday. So don't worry, just put uh, the, the most information uh, that you can. And then you uh, also have to ensure the maximum quality possible when digiti digiti sorry, digitizing such as uh, the taxonomic data uh, quality, geographical data quality, collection and collector data quality, and descriptive data quality. So in the next slides, we will see uh, each of these uh, categor categories of information and how we can improve their quality. <clears throat> 